Parashat Toldot. The Bible now begins to tell us of the clan that came from Abraham. Isaac, Rebecca, and their sons, their progeny. And I'd like to spend a few moments trying to understand the early genesis of the progeny of Isaac. First of all, it was difficult for each of the matriarchs to have children. And I think what the Bible is trying to tell us is that sometimes every great pain of and anguish of not being able to have a child, God will repay with a special child. And the Bible then tells us that the pregnancy was a difficult one. The children ran within her, within her womb. She felt a great deal of movement, running movement. And the Midrash says something very interesting. When she would pass by a house of study, a big midrash, she felt running movement within her womb. And when she would pass by a house of idolatry, she felt running movement within her womb. Vatoman and she said, "In Cain lama zenochi." If that's the case, why should I live and give birth? And she went to inquire of God, Shame and Aver, the two individuals who were great heads of academies, according to the Midrash, in order to seek counsel about the difficulty of her pregnancy. And she's told by these great Rosh Yeshiva Academy heads that there are two nations in your womb. Two different peoples in your innards. And they're struggling against each other. And one is more prone to the Beit Midrash, to the house of Torah study. And the other is more prone to the house of idolatry. And she seems comforted. Why is she comforted? What did she think in the first place? How did this help her at all? To hear that she would have one son who would be born and would turn towards idolatry. It's a beautiful Hasidic interpretation. She didn't know she had twins. You know, in those days, you couldn't take the kinds of tests that you can take today. She was afraid that it was one child who was a schizophrenic. He didn't know what he wanted. Sometimes he wanted to go to the synagogue and sometimes he wanted to go to the place of idol worship. So she was very upset. And she felt she couldn't handle such a child. So then she's comforted. There are two. Two separate boys. And uh, be satisfied. And she was. There are many other lessons, however, that we have to glean from this. Another Hasidic interpretation. The boys were struggling. And each one wanted to get out early. And 
Jacob wants to get out early when he, when he passes by a synagogue or a study hall. Esau wants to get out early when he passes by a house of idolatry. But why did Jacob want to get out of the womb? There's a charming passage in the Talmud, in the Tractate Nida, that when the child is in the womb, there's an angel that teaches the child the entire Torah. Before the child is born, the angel kisses the child above his lips. And the child exits. And forgets what he's learned. But as we know about the synapses of the brain, even though he forgets everything he's learned, relearning for the second time is much simpler. And he has a connection to Torah. It's a beautiful Midrash. It teaches us that both male babies and female babies have a connection to Torah because females also have this kiss mark above their lips. However, why does Jacob want to get out? After all, he had a marvelous Rebbe, teacher, the angel. Wasn't that special? And the Hasidic answer is, it's fine to have the greatest Rebbe in the world. But if your Chavruta, if your study partner in the womb is Esav, you darn better get out. The third and final lesson that I would like to share with you. The Bible goes on to say, the Yigdalu Hana Arim. The children grew up. And Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch says, What is the Bible telling me with those words? Obviously, they grew up. And he says as follows Every parent must understand that there are certain proclivities that their children have from the time that they are fetuses in their mother's womb. And you cannot completely transform anyone's nature. But what you can do, and what we as parents must do, is try to develop the other side. Try to find the strong points and the good points in every one of our children and develop that as strongly as we can. And don't try to make somebody into what he is not. Now, Vayigdalu Hana Arim, the boys grew up, explains the Hasidic philosopher. Yitzchak and Rebecca sent both of their sons to the same yeshiva. They shouldn't have gone to the same yeshiva. Esau needed a yeshiva that understood the importance of sports and physical activity and outdoor activity and would express that strength and then add to that Torah. Jacob could learn in the yeshiva for 18 hours a day. They each needed different places. The mistake was they didn't give each one a different education which was tailor-made for him. And that too is what we as parents must always strive to do. Shabbat Shalom.